Archaeologists say America's Indians crossed from Asia hundreds of generations ago. The Chittimacha tribe of southern Louisiana told a different story of their origin. The Great Spirit made the water and the fish. Then he sent the crawfish down to gather mud. With this mud, he made the earth and man, who he called Chittimacha. In the delta of South Louisiana, the Chittimacha built their villages on the fertile banks of slow-moving streams or bayous. Nearby lakes, forested swamps, and grassy marshes each provided different resources. Chittimacha men fished and gathered shellfish. They hunted animals and birds with bows and arrows and blowguns. The women collected roots, seeds, and wild fruit. In village gardens, they grew corn and sweet potatoes. The Chittimacha divided themselves into two classes, nobles and commoners. From the nobles came the chiefs, war chiefs, priests, and medicine women. Extended families, or clans, each had a totem, or animal symbol, such as bear, snake, panther, or dog. Status and membership in a clan were inherited through one's mother. Women played important roles in tribal government. Holy men led religious rites at a temple called the Dance House. Harvests, wars, and other events were celebrated with dancing and the music of gourd rattles and alligator skin rub boards. Ritual purification took place at the sweat house or sauna. A special group called turkey buzzard men lived apart. Their job was to pick clean the bones of the dead, to enshrine in mounds or temple baskets. Chittimachas, both men and women, wore their hair long. Clothing was stitched from animal skins. Tattoos, makeup, and jewelry adorned the body. Their houses were simple, palmetto thatch over a framework of poles. But their baskets were among the finest in North America. Reeds gathered near the bayous were split, then dyed red, black, and yellow. Baskets were double woven in a style unique to the Chittimachas. Traditional basket weaving outlived other tribal customs. Even in the 20th century, women of the tribe continued the craft. In prehistoric times, the Chittimacha traded baskets, smoked fish, Spanish moss, and feathers. In exchange, inland tribes provided stone for beads and arrowheads and special wood to make bows. Thus, the Chittimacha fit into the trading network that united North America's Indians. In 1682, the Frenchman La Salle claimed the Mississippi River and all the land around it for his king, Louis XIV. Included were more than 3,000 Chittimachas, spread among 15 villages. Almost immediately, the two cultures clashed. In 1706, French soldiers kidnapped 20 Chittimacha women and children. When Chittimacha warriors struck back, four Frenchmen, including a priest named Saint Cosme, were killed. European muskets and gunpowder overwhelmed the brave Chittimacha. Already weakened by European diseases, many were killed or pressed into slavery by the French. After a dozen years of war, 
the Chittimacha chiefs paddled to the young settlement at New Orleans. They smoked the calumet, or peace pipe, with the French governor Bienville, then sang prayers to the Great Spirit. French Cajuns and Creoles, Spanish and Anglo-Americans moved into Chittimacha territory. White settlers took over abandoned Indian cornfields. Burial mounds provided home sites safe from flooding. Chittimachas shared their knowledge of local foods and medicinal plants. Intermarriage became common. Gradually, Catholicism replaced traditional religions. French and later English replaced the Chittimacha tongue. By the early 1900s, the Chittimacha lands had been reduced to the 280 acres that comprised this reservation. When even that was threatened, Miss Sarah Avery McElhenney, heiress to the Tabasco sauce fortune, used her money and influence to save the land for the tribe. On May 18, 1916, President Woodrow Wilson signed the law which created this Chittimacha reservation. For several decades, many members of the tribe lived away from the reservation. Houseboats on the lakes were closer to fishing grounds. The Chittimacha earned meager livings at occupations that mocked their traditional livelihoods. Their ancestors believed the Great Spirit had taught them how to make dugouts from cypress trees. Now, they worked for big lumber companies that clear-cut the swamp. Once, they had gathered plants for food and medicine. Now, they gathered Spanish moss for upholstery stuffing. Once, they had tilled their plots of corn. Now, they toiled on sugarcane plantations. There was no going back to the old ways. The Chittimacha joined in the progress of the 20th century. In 1934, the Chittimacha Day School was opened on the reservation. Within two generations, there were Chittimacha College graduates. In 1971, the Chittimachas became the first Louisiana tribe to adopt a constitution. They made improvements to their reservation. Today, many Chittimacha are skilled workers in the local oil industry. Others continue the unbroken chain, centuries old, and take their livings from the lakes and bayous. The great spirit sent the crawfish to gathered mud. With this mud, he made man who he called Chittimacha. Oh, oh, oh. 